guys! Today we are continuing with our van conversion videos. This video will be a bit different to our usual content as it won't be a vlog but an explanatory video. After finishing the installing of our floor and insulation in the van, it was time to look into the electrics and everything that's involved. After a few weeks of research, we determined which appliances we would be installing into our van and what their draw on our batteries would be. If you would like to know how we sized our leisure batteries and how you can do so yourself, you can find a blog post on our website and it will be linked in the description below. And if you'd like for us to do a video on this subject, then please let us know in the comments. After determining the perfect size of leisure batteries, we calculated the wire size necessary for each appliance that will be installed in our van. We did so using a calculator that is on our website and it will be linked in the description as well, so use that if you need it. We then wired all of these cables in our van in, as you can see in our previous blog. Now today's video will be the first part of probably two or three videos on the electrical system that we have. In the next video you will see how we install everything in our van, but today we would like to focus on two things. In today's video we are focusing on our electrical setup and we will explain it using our electrical diagram and introducing that step by step. After that I'll show you our group cabinets and explain how we have installed all components. So let's get into it. So let's start with an overview of our electrical diagram. We wrote about this a few weeks ago so be sure to check out that blog post if you haven't read it already. The link will be in the description below this video. We will be living fully off-grid and we will not have a mains hookup. This means that all of our energy will come from the sun. We have attached a couple of solar panels to the roof of our van and the sun will power those. The energy that is provided by the sun to these solar panels will be stored in our leisure batteries. These le leisure batteries won't be wired to the solar panels directly, but via a charge controller. This charge controller will charge the leisure batteries when necessary and will stop charging the leisure batteries even though it's sunny if the leisure batteries are full. The solar charger will thus protect the leisure battery from overcharging and will thus protect your batteries from any potential damage due to overcharging. Now we will have both 12 volts and 230 volt appliances. The 12 volt appliances will include two sets of LEDs, a fridge, a toilet, a water pump and a fan. The 12 volt appliances will be connected to the charge controller rather than directly to the leisure batteries. This allows for the charge controller to power these appliances when the sun is shining rather than first charging the leisure batteries and then drawing energy from the leisure batteries back again to these appliances. These 12 volt appliances will be connected via a fuse box to the charge controller. We will talk more about that later on. Now, the 230 volt appliances will also be connected via a fuse box, but they will not be wired to the charge controller or the leisure batteries directly. This is because the charge controller and leisure batteries provide 12 volt power and we need 230 volt. The 230 volt appliances will hence be wired through an inverter. An inverter will first convert the energy from 12 volt to 230 volt and then connect to the 230 appliances via the fuse box. So now let's check how we connected all of these wires via the fuse boxes and how we organize all of that in one small cabinet. So now that you have seen our electrical diagram, I thought it would be nice to show you guys how we will be organizing all of our wiring. Now we have decided to organize everything very, very thoroughly. And we thought it would be best to do so in a small cabinet that we can attach to the wall in the van. Now this might look difficult, but it actually isn't. And I will show you guys simply what it all is and what it does. So as you saw in the electrical diagram, we had 12 volt appliances on one side and two 30 volt appliances on the other. And that's the same in this occasion, in this box. Over here, this will be connected to the 12 volt appliances. And over there, this will be connected to the 230 volt appliances. Now, let me tell you the names of all of these components before continuing on to explain what everything does. These 
metal attachments are called DIN reels. These grey pieces are called terminals. This is a blade fuse box with blade fuses. This is an RCD and these are trips or MCBs. Then the red cables are the live wires and the grey cables are the neutral wires. The blue connector bit up there is called a bus bar. Now the DIN reels are quite simple. They are screwed into the cabinet and they will hold together all of these components. So they are basically just a small way to attach all components. The terminals are quite simple as well. The 12 volt appliances, as you know, will be connected to the charge controller. A cable will, be, will run from the charge controller into this terminal, connected via this terminal to the live wire and up into the fuse box. Now, we could have also run a cable directly from the charge controller to the fuse box, but we decided to have a cable run up to this terminal to connect via the terminal to the fuse box. Um, this basically makes it all look a little bit more organized and it will also make it quite easy to um, reuse this terminal and to insert a different cable without having to touch this entire area. Now as you can see this blade fuse box is attached to six different cables, three on either side. Um, this blade fuse box has space for five different fuses on either side so total of 10 appliances can be attached to this fuse box um, but since we only have six we decided to attach three on either side. So this box not only divides the live cable into six new live cables but it also holds six fuses and these fuses make sure that if anything happens they will prevent uh, the cables from melting and from a fire to start and they will eventually also protect the appliances so it's basically um, a safety measure and if one of these fuses breaks the light a light will switch on next to, next to that fuse now all of these cables are again inserted into six terminals so this one cable was split into six cables and attached to six different terminals. These terminals again will connect this cable to the cable that belongs to the appliance. So this is not one set, it's six different terminals that are not connected anymore. The wires that r will run up to the appliance will come back from the appliance down into this bus bar and this bus bar will then basically turn all of these six cables into one and run it back down to the charge controller via this terminal. This completes the entire circuit and makes it one full circle. Now on the other side we have two more terminals connected to the DIN bar. Again we have a life cable coming up and a neutral cable going down. This life cable is run through an RCD switch. Now this is something that we do not have in the 12 volt section, but in the 230 volt section we do. An RCD unit protects you against short circuit. The RCD unit basically compares the current from the live wire to that from the neutral. If there is a difference in current, the RCD will turn over. It is currently switched to off and it will go from top to bottom and will break the circuit. If, for example, your camper van is energized due to a faulty wire and you touch the van, you can get electrocuted. This could lead to severe damage if it occurs longer than a fraction of a second. However, the RCD unit will detect this current leakage and will break the circuit almost instantaneously and will most times prevent any serious damage to you. The life cable will run up into this RCD. There is a small bridge up here that I will show you which is connected to both of these trips. That's why these trips are faced upside down because they can only be connected with such a copper bridge on this side. And that connects this cable back to these two. So this 
and those are the same cable basically but split into two. This is our 230 volt side and these two cables will be connected to our two plug sockets. Now these two trips are again switched off, doesn't matter, there is nothing connected, they should be switched on downwards, this one upwards, when we will be eventually using it. And what these two do, um, they are actually the same as these fuses. So again, if, there, if anything happen, happens, this switch will go up and we will be protected from any damage that might come to us or to the appliances. These cables are then fed through two more terminals and two cables run up to two plug sockets in the van. Now, if one of these LED lights does switch on, we know that there is an issue and that one of these fuses has broken. We can simply replace it by uh, placing a new fuse into this box. Before doing so, however, we will obviously have to check what is wrong if there is something that we overpowered or if there is something like uh, a cable that's broken. Now, this cabinet will be installed in the van. It can close and it even has a lock so this will keep everything safe neat and tidy and clean but as you can see this is quite a large cabinet so we will be able to expand eventually so here are four more spots for four more appliances so we can add those there the wire that will be connected to this terminal will come straight from the charge controller and the wire that will be con uh, connected into this terminal will come straight from the inverter. That is because this does not have to be changed into 230 volts. We just need 12 volts here, but we need a 230 volt circuit, circuit here. So that's why these wires will come from different directions. All we have to do now is to make holes in both the bottom and the top of this cabinet so that we can run wires up through the bottom and out through the top. Then here we have one final thing that we are adding to the circuit which is kind of like an emergency switch that we can use if we want all power to be turned off. This will be connected between the charge controller and the fuse box as well as between the battery and the inverter. So if there is ever need to switch off all appliances we can simply turn the switch and everything will be switched off. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video and if it helped you out, please give it a thumbs up, give it a comment, share your ideas in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. You can watch our previous vlog here and subscribe here if you're interested. Thank you, bye bye!